Good morning, everyone. It is 10 a.m. and today we are going to be having a lot of fun. We're going to do some painting and we're going to be doing some montage and we're going to enjoy. You can see through the, the camera there, I have this like beautiful sunshine that's coming through. It is so good to see the spring um, weather is starting to be able to come through and good morning, Joy. I'm so glad that you're watching. Um, we finally, I guess, turned a little bit of a corner. We did have hail yesterday, so it was sunny and then hail and um, it is trying so hard to be uh, springtime. So, oh, it looks like I have my puppy dog saying hi this morning. Um, but anyways, I wanted to just welcome you to my channel This is, and uh, Facebook page and Etsy shop. This is Eileen and uh, I own Jane Nicole Designs and we today are going to be doing some redesign. I have in front of me a tin can and it's one of those where um, I saw this on um, some, some uh, Facebook pages and things like that and um, last couple weeks I've been... Um, Good morning. <laughs> it's it's been the last couple of weeks that I've just been um, collecting some cans and things like that. Now I find myself, um, you know, oh, what can I put in 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 my dinners and things like that, so I can you know wash out a can and use it in some way. Um, and you've seen me use uh, the cans before. I've used them as. Um, you know, utensil holders and things like that. Um, I use the the tops of the cans. I'll show you right here, really quick. I use the tops of the cans for um, paint and um, I use it that way as little trays and whatnot. But there's many uses that you can use um, these and, and there's things that I see that it's like, don't throw these things away. They're so valuable and I'm like, so um, in the comments, go ahead and let me know if you're watching live. There's that little uh, red button there. It says live. And if not, um, if it's not illuminated, that means it's a replay. And so just put in the comments hashtag replay. And that just allows me to know when you're going to be watching. Uh, go ahead and uh, let us know where you're watching from and uh, what your weather's like. Are you getting the springtime yet or not? And um, just if, if there's something on your mind you want to talk about, whatever, just let me know. I'm here just to hang out with you guys for the next hour, give you a tutorial of something that you can do, and then, um, you know, have fun with it. So, okay, so I'm just, uh, this one here, I think this was a soup can. Um, and I just uh, wash it out. I throw these in the dishwasher uh, just along with my regular loads of dishes when I, um, you know, I finish up one of these. And um, all I do is the first thing you're going to use, and this is, I did not have time this morning to go on and find out if this exact one is still on, but this is Pampered Chef. And it is a can opener that it just is going to take off the rim of the can and not leave any jagged. Um, so let me show you the first thing I did. And this is kind of weird. It's got this little little um, circle here that just kind of cuts the, the top of it off. And the cool thing about this one is little kiddos can use this one and uh, be able to help you out in the kitchen. That's what I love about it. Um, and I've had this one for a long, long time. And so once you're done going all the way around, you turn it backwards and then there's this little, this little claw clip, it almost looks like a parrot beak. And then you just pull on it and then it just pops off the top. The cool thing is, is there's no, I don't want to do it too hard, but it's not super um, sharp or any way like that. And then this is all, I can touch it without having it, um, uh, it cut me or anything like that. So you can use this, like I said, for little trays and things like that. Um, and now you're set with a can. And uh, <laughs> just just an FYI, these are, you know, they're tin, they're pliable, but they're not super pliable. So um, I, this morning I was out in my garage with my husband. We were trying to figure out how to get this. And he was like, here, let's just do it this way. And I'm like, I need to figure out how to do this. Um, and he showed me that if you take a vise, you know, a little vise, and you put two pieces a, of uh, wood together and you put the, the can in between the vise, you can twirl the vise and then squish it together. So that is, that's an 
an easy way to do it. Um, it we, we had a little bit of, okay, do we do one side and the other, crimp the sides? So it's up to your um, discretion what you wanna do. If you do not have a vise, um, the good old bending it like this, and then um, I am not going to do it this morning because it is super loud. My my daughter is still sleeping and she, hers, she, her room's down here with me um, off of the side of my craft um, area. So, um, but this is how you would do it if you um, did not have a vise. And all I am doing is just pressing it together. You could, if you'd like, I just have a little jewelry um, pliers and just take and crimp the sides really good. And I think that's the, the biggest thing. If you can get the sides crimped, squish it together just like that, and then keep going. Then I would take, I have this cute little um, hammer, but then I would take and hammer the sides. Um, my husband was saying, okay, go ahead and put it down here and then just tap it down and then flip it over, tap it down. And then basically what we're gonna be doing, this is called a tin can pocket posy or pocket planter. So that's that's what it's called if you're if you um, want it want the technical terms on it. But anyways, I would just go ahead and just pound along the side there and push it together and then that is the bottom part. You want this to be completely closed as much as you can. Um, but I'll show you if you can't do that, I'll show you how to how to um, to be able to to uh, fix that. But like I said, I'm just pushing it. And this one here, this is a, I think it's just like a regular soup can. It's not like a Campbell's, the smaller ones. It's the, the like Progresso or whatever it is, the, the um, larger can. So this is like a medium sized can. Anyway, so that is what we're gonna be working with. So uh, I, for, for time and, and noise <laughs> sake, I am just going to set that aside and I am gonna bring out what we worked on in the garage there. This here is a Bush's baked beans can. And you know, it's taller than the other one. It's, it's a little bit larger. And so it took a little bit more oomph to it. So that's what I say, if you have um, means to be able to uh, either pound it close or take the vise and, and push it together, um, this is what we came up with. And it, it does crackle a little bit because we're moving the, the tin back and forth to be able to close it up. But um, like I said, you can keep pounding on it. You can make sure that it goes together really, really good. So um, that is my suggestion. So now that we have this, um, you can, there's a couple different things that you can do with this. You could just leave it just like this. You could take um, the wax this is Waverly, this is antique wax and dark, and you could just put that on there and you could make it vintage. And I think that would be really cool. You could mix up paint and make it look like it's uh, uh, rustic and you could do that and put it on there, there and make it all natural. So um, it's, you know, it's okay to be able to do that. But um, today what we're gonna do is I'm gonna paint it with chalk paint. And I have a couple different um, things that I'm doing. I'm using, um, I'm using what we're gonna be making today in my room. Remember I was, I last, if you watched my video before, I am making Americano uh, bedroom um, decor in my master bedroom. And I'm just starting to, you know, see how this project and this type of, of uh, you know, can art, I don't know what you call it, but um, anyway, I am just gonna be using these for my room. So I hope in the future that um, I'm gonna start making them and putting them in my Etsy shop because um, they are really fun little gift that you can give for a baby shower. You could put it in a you know nursery. You could do Mother's Day, May Day, whatever um, that you would like to do. I would, I mean, this would even really be cute for um, Christmas that you can hang from your mantle. Uh, this would be really cute for um, Halloween and you can put some candy in it and give out um, at your front door, that kind of thing, a birthday gift, you know, uh, anniversary. It, it kind of, you know, it can go wherever you want it to go. So anyway, I just took this one. Now this one here, it has a little bit of the, um, 
the glue on it. Um, and I did run this through my dishwasher, so the most of the glue is off. Um, you could do a little bit more um, if you'd like to, but because this is chalk paint and it covers really well, I'm just gonna leave it just the way it is. So um, let's go ahead and we're gonna try this out. So the brush that I'm using today, um, let me get this, I just use it on my other one. This is, I got this at Walmart and it's a, a thinner, um, see how it's really thin? And these are bristles that are very soft and I want something that um, I don't want too rough like um, when I paint if I have um, streaks and things like that I want this one to look a little bit more finished and so I chose a brush I mean you could do I usually use this one this one's one of my go-to and see how it's really um, coarse and things like that and that's what gets me the the stroke marks that I, I if I want it to, to be really distressed and thing like that but today I'm going to do a little bit more polished look let me get my glasses on so I can make sure that I find and see what I want and rolling up the sleeves today because I, I, I just got this and um, this is a sweatshirt goes down to my knees. I think I'm going to wear it when we go out boating, but any suggestions on what I should put on the front? I can't decide if I want to do something nautical in a design um, or I don't know yet. So if you have any suggestions and you, you're you so inclined to say, hey, go ahead and put this on the shirt. I have not washed it yet, so I'm ready to, to put a design on it in vinyl. Um, and if you want to look at some examples, I do have an Etsy shop. It's Jane Nicole Designs, and I have about 300 shirts on there right now. So um, anyway, okay, long story short and lots of little bunny trails it looks like today. Uh, let's see. Okay, so today I'm going to do this. I'm going to start with this. This is Waverly. It's chalk paint. This is an ivory. I use ivory because I just, it's its a pretty porcelain looking and, uh, ooh, wear red scarf. Ooh, I, hmm, okay, Joy. I might be doing something like that. Um, this one here, sorry about that. Get back to, um, but this one here is uh, a little bit off white. My Waverly white, see the difference? It just gives it a little bit of a tinge um, of, of almost like um, weathered look or maybe that it would be um, a little bit a dusty, dirty kind of thing. And I want that in my project. So I'm gonna use one of the tops here and I'm just gonna put some paint on here. And I wanna make sure that always clean off the top of your your paint because half the time it dries on there and then you end up having to use a jar opener to get it, things off i don't know about you i always struggle with that kind of thing the um the liquid gold i always end up using that to to be able to get into it so just be careful and make sure that when you are doing uh projects and whatnot and always get a baby wipe off to the side ready to go um that you you clean up your your supplies i know how that is um and then that you close up your lids and things like that make sure that it is completely ready for storage okay so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take and i'm going to go you know me in projects we always start from the foundation up and this is going to be um I'm going to do a couple coats of this on here, but for, for time's sake, I'm going to show you, let's make sure I have a little fuzzy on here. I don't want to add fuzzies to my project, but just see how I'm putting it on there. Pretty uh, medium, I would say. I don't want it too thick because I'll show you in just a minute the reasons why but I just want to make sure I'm just putting my hand right in the middle of it. I could put it on my trivet, but because it's not as um, flat, I think this is the best way how to do it. And like I said, don't be too generous on this because you want to, this is one of those projects that it's going to take you a little bit of time. This is one of those where ask a friend over and you got you make one and your friend make one and then you can sit and have coffee drink a little bit of uh or have some snacks 
I like that. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a snack person. I like to have a little, little bit of drinks and lots of snacks. Okay. And I'm going, I, if I didn't tell you before, I'm always, this is a project where I'm going to go and paint in the same direction. I just want to make sure that it's, um, you could go all the way up and down like that, but because of the grooves, it gets uh, better coverage if you go side to side. And just go ahead and long strokes, make sure that it gets all covered. You could make it so that you can leave some of the tin showing. Like I said, you could do that and um, do some type of like French country um, or vintage looking um, shabby chics, one of the, the big things to, to be able to model it after. But I just wanna make sure that I get this whole can to my liking. So let me know, have you ever done anything like this? Is this one of those where, do you have something in your recycling that you can, uh, you can pull out this morning <laughs> and throw it in, in your dishwasher or or uh, clean it up really quick. And all it takes is a little bit of paint and, and a few extra embellishments today. Okay, so this is what it looks like. I have, basically it's all covered. Um, I could do the, the top of it. I'm gonna leave it a little bit rustic looking. Um, but this is how, this is the first coat. And so trial and error, and I actually this morning was um, trying to figure out, okay, what is the best way to dry this? And number one is if you heat it up too much, the can, it will bubble the paint. So you don't want to bubble the paint, right? Unless you want some type of a distressed look, but for this project, um, I don't want it to bubble. So um, I'm gonna use my hair dryer, and I just got my hair dryer at a, a thrift store, I think it was, for like two, three bucks, and um, you know, you can see it's got paint on it and whatnot. I use this quite a bit. Um, I tried, oh, it's over on my other, other desk, but I tried to use an embossing tool, and the embossing tool was way too hot. So um, when you're doing this, go ahead and either just let it air dry for a few hours, or if you wanna speed up the process like I'm doing right now, go ahead and use your dryer. So it's gonna get loud for a little bit, but um, it is well worth it because it'll dry properly. So hold on. not just to keep chatting because you won't hear me. So thank you for allowing me to do that. The one thing about this is if you put your hair dryer on high, it does get a little warm, but you're not going to burn yourself, but just be careful. And I just want to touch it and make sure that everything is dry because I want to put a second coat on it. So let's do that. And um, like I said, it, the, the second coat, you don't have to do as, as generous if you don't want to, um, I'm going to do it a little bit less because chalk paint really covers very well when you do, um, you know, straight on tin. Uh, if you wanted to, you could, you could, if you wanted to do a um, primer and then just do one coat of chalk paint. Um, 
but I just decided because it's such a great coverage that um, I just did, uh, I'm just gonna do two, two uh, coats of chalk paint. But, um, and I hope to be able to do this and do uh, put little things in my garden. So I'm not sure how, how you guys are doing, but we've had so much frost that um, the, uh, our, I haven't even put my garden out yet. I bought little, um, well, medium-sized watering troughs for, for livestock. And I have, um, I am gonna fill them with dirt and put, um, I'm gonna do startings. I did not get, um, just learning how Idaho works in gardening, I, I, I missed the window of, of starting my seeds inside. So I bought a bunch of stuff and um, I guess we are zone, I think it's nine or something like that. So I guess zone nine, you should have put them at the beginning of April in your, um, in the, the seedling containers and things like that. So, okay. So anyway, I'm going to be able to, to just put, put, um, just startings and things like that in my garden. It looks like this year. Okay. So I'm just looking at it, making sure that I have, oh, oh, sorry, dog's barking. Um, this is what it looks like. I got two coats. We're going to do that again. So look at that. It's all, it may be a little bit tacky, so we don't want to drag our hands or anything on it right now, but I'm going to um, show you just, um, there's just many ways that you can do this. Um, I have pieces of fabric that I was thinking about. Um, I have jeans that I was looking at. Um, so let me know if you're like, hmm, let's see, let's do that. Um, this is really cool. I Right behind me, I thought this was super fun. I was thrift shopping and um, thrifting, I should say. And um, I found a big, huge, uh, it was like a, 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 what do you call it? Um, probably a queen size. One of those bags that has um, like a, all the, um, oh goodness, what am I trying to say? The uh, bedding and things like that. Sorry, it was one of those. It it escaped me. Um, so I had the the bedding bag, and it was full of a bunch of um, all different fabrics and things like that. So I took one day. I love organizing. I am huge on. I'm just. It's one of those. I love to organize things. That's a lot. Good morning, Renee. Um, I love to be able to take something and then organize it and then put it together. So I took all of the fabric that I got. You see the couple layers here, um, and color coded them and put them in felt. And I have cotton and things like that. So um, I I think I got it for like fourteen dollars. And so for $14, I have a myriad of different pieces of fabric and, um, and some of it is cut into little pieces. Some of it is, you know, but I, in my crafting, I use all sorts of different, um, things like that. So it, it has been a really cool, you can see, um, you can see a little bit, I can move it up a little bit. I made a, um, a springtime wreath out of just shreds of the the uh, fabric and oh I love it it's super fun so when you're when you're out and about you're at the Goodwill or whatever and you have 
um, opportunity to get fabric like that. It's super cool. I'm sure it was from a, a crafter or a quilter that, um, you know, took little pieces, sewing and whatnot, put it all in a bag and either, it, and it, it smelled fine. So I was I'm like, good, okay. It, it wasn't too weird. Um, but I'm sure it was one of those where somebody was just like, oh, I just don't want to, I just, I'm done. So I was like, yep, guess what? That is my treasure. And so, like I said, it took me a little while to organize it all and put it under color and what type of fabric. And there's some really fun stuff. So I hope in future projects and things like that, I'll be able to show you. Um, just wiping my hands off. I just want to make sure that um, while I'm doing this, I don't have any paint or scuffing on the, on the cans. Okay, so in this, um, the person I think was a quilter because this is a, a sheet and it's already got like a little rimming, uh, ribbing and everything like that. So I'm actually just going to take that and I'm going to just fold it just like that. So this is one way that you can, can, um, you know, close up the can. You could also take some, um, some, uh, hot glue and we could do that. We could just take a little bit. I have my hot glue here. I could take it and just put hot glue down there and um, squish it together and close it up. That, that would be one of those where if you wanted to make sure that it was water um, tight so that let's say you put a plant in this or something that you didn't want to, um, you know, have it get wet and things like that. But um, for this project, I am actually just going to close it up with the glue. So um, I'm going to measure this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it and use that little uh, finished edge right there. And I'm just going to wrap it around. And I'm going to cut it off. This is the one thing. Either I can fold it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my glue gun. And this is my handy dandy glue gun. I do have a, a relationship with my glue gun because I love it so much. It, this is one of those. This is on low. Um, it's a dual temperature. You can do high and low. I do it on low because I always burn myself. I love it that it has a little tip on the end that um, it's super, super, you know, intricate in being able to do that. I got it at Walmart for $14 or something like that. And I have never, ever gone back on, on uh, being able to regret doing that. The other thing too is um, at the dollar store, these are little, uh, they're, what are they called? They're called finger protectors. And you get them in a pack of three. I know, I'm sorry, it's backwards. But um, I kid you not, these are super cool. And me, I have little tiny fingers. <laughs> and so if you can see in there, I put a little bit of glue with um, some paper in there so that it fits better. <laughs> um, the one on my thumb fits fine, so that's fine. But this one kept falling off. And so, I, like I said, I just put a little glue in there and I put um, uh, part of a... a Oh, what do you call it? A rubber glove so that it would stick and kind of stay on my finger. So just, just an FYI, if, if, if they don't fit, that's how to, how to do it. But I use them just so that I can make sure that I don't burn myself. So, all right, there we go. All I did was just turn it over and I just want to make sure that, um, I'm going to do that to this side, but I'm going to trim it off a little bit just to make sure. Now, also, if you wanted to, you can fold over the top here. So I roll it back so you can see it. You can fold over the top just to, to um, finish off that edge as well. So I'm going to do that. And this, I mean, there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. Um, but... There's, uh, you could put um, raffia at the bottom and bows and you can do all sorts of things. But for this one here, I just wanted to make sure, there we go, actually I don't need that, it's, it's pretty good. I'm not putting a whole lot on here. This is kind of my sewing machine. I'm not a huge sewer. Um, I can mend different things, but uh, I have a friend that I just met this last couple um, months and she is a very beautiful seamstress and she's like, Eileen, we need to get together and we need to teach you how to sew. And I'm like, 
Okay, so I may be adding sewing into my my projects that I do, but for right now, it's a glue gun. And and I have no no problem with that. Okay, so I do have a couple little pieces that I because um, they're sticking out. I want to trim those off. You can also trim off a little bit of the corner on your on your um, edges so that it doesn't get too fluffy. Just make sure that it goes over. Okay, Oop, got it. All right, so now I'm just going to fold it in half so it looks like that. There we go. I'm gonna move my trivet. I don't need that right now. We're just gonna do it right here on the mat that I have. And this mat here, I got at the dollar store for, ah, um, oh, perfect. Um, for, you know, I think it's $1.25 now. It's not really the dollar store anymore. But um, yeah, I buy like four or five of them at a time and just make sure that I have um, a couple in waiting. All right, so just to just to make sure, this is the backside of my can. I'm going to switch it over because I want that beautiful finished edge to be on the front. And like I say, you can do as whatever you would like. But I kind of want to make it look What do you guys think? Is that okay? I think I will start and make sure that the front is on first. We're kind of doing the f the fly fly by. I have not done this part yet, so I am learning along with you. That's the cool part. It's one of those. Okay, so I went ahead and just put a bunch of hot glue on there. Make sure that it's as straight as you would like it to be. Put it on there. And it looks like it's, yep. Oh, I got, let's move that off to the side. There we go, extra, extra glue there. Okay, and then I will do the same on this side. Go ahead and we're just gonna put it um, as far as I think it's gonna go. And I'm gonna be a little bit generous on here. I wanna make sure that the corners, and this one I will, oh, wrong one. Gotta get the one that fits. This one, I will put this on here. There we go. Like I said, I do not want to get burnt on this. And as you go, oh, wrong one, get our hair dryer out of the way. Oh, this is looking so cute. I'm so excited. Okay, and I do have the edges that are open, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of glue and I'm going to just close it up. I don't want the glue to squish out because then you don't want a bunch of... So I just am gonna take and finish off the edge. Glue down the sides just to make sure. And I may put something on the corner there just to, to finish it off. Okay, so I want to make sure that I get a little bit of glue in there. Don't make it squish out again. I'm just going to close it up. There we go. I'm going to use this. This It's really cool. It doesn't stick too bad to it. So... There we go. Okay, so there we go. Isn't that cool? Little glue gun. And then if you look inside, I do have, it opened up a little bit, but it's fine to do that because um, like I said, I'm not using it for uh, a water, you know, or a plant inside. So um, I think it should be fine just to have a little bit of it open. But isn't that super cute? I love it. Okay, so now, the other thing I need to show you, this is super cool. I don't know if you've seen this. This is called a cropodile, and um, it has little knobs and things like that that you can actually um, move back and forth. Let's see if I can do it this way. You can move it back and forth, and it will um, cut or 
do a hole right where you precision cut it to be. So I am going to cut um, two holes in it. And I this one here is a, uh, let's see, this is a 316 hole and this is a 1 8 hole. So there's two different sizes of holes. And then this right here is for brads. You just push it together and it will, it's got adjustable that you can do different brads and things like that. And I, I use that every once in a while, but um, if I wanted to, I could use that for this project and put a really nice little um, brad that, that goes in the hole. But for rustic sake, I'm not going to today. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the, the 1 8 hole. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, my wire is pretty good. So you just spin, spin that little knob and then I'm going to measure it. So this is how it's going to be on my wall. I'm going to measure how far I want it to go down. Yeah, about there. And then where you when you have it where you want it, turn it so that it's it stays that little piece in place so that on each side you're going to have the exact same depth. That's what I love about it. So, here we go. I just want to line it up where we're going. And this is the cool part. This crocodile, if you want it a little bit down farther, um, this crocodile is, uh, I've had this for probably 15, 10, 15 years. Um, it's uh, Memory Keepers. You can get it, I'm sure you can still get it on um, Amazon and things like that. So, all right. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna put it right where the side of the can is. And then I'm just gonna crunch, you hear it? And there's a little hole right there. Super cool, isn't that awesome? Um, you can use a nail, you could use a, a drill, um, but I don't wanna pound on it any more than, than I have to. I want the tin to stay as, as the integrity of the tin to stay as, as well as it is. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this one. Make sure that it's right across from each other. It's a two-hander, and there we go. See, isn't that awesome? Good morning, Amy. So now I have the two sides. They're ready to go. All right, so I, if you look off to the side here, I went to the Goodwill probably, oh gosh, probably five years ago, something like that, and I found this wire copper. Um, it is a big, ginormous roll. And I thought about, you know, recycling it and getting pretty good money for it. But then I'm like, you know what? There's there's crafting to be done. So um, I picked it up and said, you know what? This is this is it. So um, you can use any type of. I'm just trying to find the end. There it is. You could use any type of uh, floral wire. You could use um, ribbon anything that you want to make the handle. That's what we're gonna do right now. We're just gonna make the handle. And this right here, it's pretty, it's a pretty thick gauge. And so I won't be doing too many swirlies and things like that with this, um, but you know, some of the little bit more pliable, this is a uh, regular floral wire. You could do that and make swirlies. You could put beads on the, on the handle or whatever you wanna do. Uh, but, for today, I want to kind of keep that, that Americano theme going on. And the one thing about this, I, I had a couple questions um, or watching some things and questions. Make sure that when you put your, um, your handle on, that you could be able to put it up against the wall and not have it like, instead of nicely laying against like this, having it tilted, or if it's not um, long enough, you're gonna, I mean, it's gonna sit like that if you're, so make sure that you have a, a good amount of um, handle on there so that unless you put it on like some type of a hook or something like that, when you hang it from um, whatever it is, you know, I could see like one of those little garden basket hooks that you could hang it from. Uh, but if you're just gonna put a nail in the wall or, or some type of a, a finial or something like that in the wall, just make sure that the handle is long enough so that it does not, um, it does not uh, stick out weird. So I have a couple ways that you can do this. I just have a, a actually I stole these from my husband's workshop like a long time ago, but this is just a wire cutter. And um, I just do a little 
break in it and then um, bend it back and forth. So let's do that. All right. Okay. So now here is my, this is probably, let's see. Ooh, it's mm, probably about two and a half, two feet long. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I want to make sure that it looks a little bit decorative. So these are just uh, jewelry um, pliers and they're little, they're pretty, it's pretty sturdy, but I'm just going to take it and wrap it around. I want something that's not too elementary, but I want it to make it look a little, little like a tried, but I just want to make sure that we're not going to, um, I'm not going to, to, uh, poke myself or anything like that. So there we go. We got one side and all I did was just do a little swirly. You could, I think it'd be really awesome if you wanted to take and uh, to take some beads, whatever you want to do and put, put down on there. So I can do it this way where I can put it in the inside or I can do it on the outside and it's up to you what you would like to do, but I'm going to do it on the inside. So all it is, is just of little because we're not really going to be seeing it for this project and so I'm just going to go in through the inside take my jewelry pliers I'm going to swirl it around so it does not come out and like I said I you know if, if you wanted to you could take beads or, or, you know, I could see this really cute with, um, isn't that so cute? I'm so excited. I can see taking some beads and going up around on the top, um, doing some type of a, um, of a ribbon, things like that. You know me, I have my little box of, of, of ribbon and, um, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. This does not match, but this would be really fun to take and swirl a matching color around it so that you have all sorts. I mean, it's so fun to use scraps. That's the big thing. I, that's one of the things where I'm like, I don't throw very much away because I like the scraps, but, um, anyway. Okay. So there we go. Here we have it. This is our base, our foundation. So we have the handle. We made sure that the, the bottom of it was covered up now for the decorating part. This is the cool part. So, all right, we're going to clean up a little bit. I got some supplies just kind of hanging around that I don't want to get messed in my, in my design. So let me put some things away and then, okay, we need to make sure that, yeah, let's do it. We need to make sure that um, it's sealed. And if you want to put this outside, I would use uh, here it is right here. I would use, I got my little stash over there. Um, this is called Hello Hobby and it is varnish. Sorry, it's backwards, but this is matte finish and you take this, um, you don't shake it. That was one thing I, I failed miserably the first time I used this. I shook it up really good and I was like, oh no, there's tons of bubbles if you do that. So do not shake it up, um, but you can just rock it back and forth like that. That's how you do it. And then um, you, it's just like varnish. You just uh, put a nice thin coat on it, let it dry, and then it should be okay for being outside. Um, mine is not gonna be outside, so I'm not really gonna worry about varnishing it for right now, but I am going to use, this is Waverly, this is wax. And um, I say, it, this is white from Waverly. And I am just gonna take it and I want to prepare my surface and I love it. Look at it. It's, it's white. You can get it in different. Um, I showed you before this is the, um, the antique. So this would be like, um, if you took, uh, you know, I would think it, it would be really pretty to do like the pink and the, the Waverly has, um, oh, I put them away, uh, but they have different colors that are darker and taking this and putting it on it and antiquing. So like if I had one that had, um, you know, filigrees or roses or something like that, that I would put on here that would be flat and then embellishment um, and then going in the cracks and crevices and things like that. This antique is really pretty. So you could do that one. And I do have just clear antique. This right here, this is comes in clear. 
So there's many different types of, of Waverly, but um, I want to do it in this. So I'm going to take this and I just want to make sure this, here we go again. I love, I love scraps. This is just a scrap of, we used this last week in our project, <laughs> um, but I'm going to take this, we'll flip it over and this is how I'm going to seal it. I just take a little bit from the just like that on my um, my thing. And I just see how it's a little bit different. It's going to change the color a tiny bit. So don't re be don't be alarmed. But I'm just going to take that and put it on the top. And that prepares my surface. Let's see, it's even got a little bit of a I love it. It's um, got a little bit of a color so that I can um, I can have a couple different layers of it. But I just go ahead and rub it back and forth. And then you know that your chalk paint is sealed. And if you wanted to, this could go, I mean, I wouldn't do this in direct, like, pouring down rain, but you can have a little bit of, of, um, weather that gets on it. Um, but I just want to make sure that it's sealed a little bit because I'm going to be putting some stuff on here and we'll I'll show you what we're going to do next. And that's the cool thing. You can do a bunch of different layers of all different stuff. Um, or you can just like I said, just have the tin can just like it is. But for this project today, I just want to make sure that um, there's a few different layers. I'd like that part. Okay, so no need to let it dry or whatever, the wax. We're just going to wipe it off a little bit and that's, that's how it works. And then it is ready, ready to go. Okay, so there we go. That's just a little bit of, of Waverly wax. All right, so it's ready. There, let's make sure that this goes on okay. There. Always gotta make sure they're closed. I don't wanna come back and after I've spent like six things, you know, $6 on something and then it's all dried out so we don't want to do that. Okay. So I am, I, I'm, I'm going to use this one. I think this is uh, just a little piece I found in my little scrap bin and I'm going to pull off some of the uh, thread on here. So it makes it a little bit tattered and frayed. We'll do that. And that's the cool part about these. You can you can start using scraps and you can, I mean, I think this would be really cool to take this and then just completely cover it with all different kinds of, of fabric. I think that would be an awesome, especially like for a baby's room and do like a boho with, with like um, pink and light green and all that kind of stuff. I think that would be awesome. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna take, and I just want um, this piece just to go right on the top like that. So the Mod Podge I'm gonna to use today, this is Mod Podge, this is the uh, matte finish. And um, this you do have to shake up a little bit and make sure that it's, there we go, that it's not too crazy. All right, and today I'm gonna to use this brush because I want it to be a little bit more precise. So I'm just gonna load up my brush like that. And today I'm gonna to do something that's totally probably unconventional with Maj Paj. You usually put it on the piece, but I only want it to go where the fabric is. So I, I don't wanna to be too crazy um, with my Maj Paj. I just wanna put it on there right, right on the fabric. I'm also, as I do this, I'm not gonna put a huge amount on here but I'm also kind of just 
taken my time because I want it to dry a little bit. I almost want it to be like, like rubber cement. That's a good way to say it. So the fan um, brush makes it so that it doesn't get loaded too much. And it's very precise. I wanted the small one because I want to make sure I'm not going out to the edges because I want the edges to be a little bit free. I want those little tassels to be, or the the, the spritzies on the, uh, the fabric. I want that to be able to move. There we go. But I wanna make sure that this stays. Okay, so I'm gonna show you, this is what I did. So I just went around and made sure that the outside was not was not um, there. So now I'm just going to go ahead. Let's get it in so you guys can see. This is a fun part. Okay. I want to make sure I'm going to do this way. And I'm just going to I'm gonna do it this way. There we go. I'm just going to lay it down. And then um, you've seen me use this before. These are just gloves. I'm sure you got a few laying around um, if you're a crafter. And just lightly go ahead, use this. I love using, either you can use plastic wrap, you can use uh, gloves and things like that. I'm gonna move it down a little bit, a little bit more. There we go. Just use that and it glides along nicely so that when you, uh, when you have your projects, it doesn't squish out and the, the plastic moves along your project really well. And that's one thing I like about it. I think it'll work good. So there we go. Okay, we're, we're gonna keep moving. All right, the next thing we're gonna do, let me find out, yep, there it is. It's always under something. When you're missing something on your craft uh, table, it's always under something. Um, this is, this is, um, the, the napkins that I chose for today. And um, I got these at Tuesday morning, the store, and they were kind of spendy. There were four or 49, but there's 48 napkins and there's gonna be a lot of projects that I can use. Or, you know, when um, 4th of July comes along. <laughs> hey, good morning, Carolyn. Um, thank you so much. Uh, I know my crafting journey, I love it to be able to, um, Here's my motto. I believe in stealing ideas. So sometimes I get an idea and then revamp it. <laughs> sometimes I see something and do the exact same thing. But most of the time I look on, on um, Pinterest. I look on, um, I have a couple different uh, websites or um, Facebook groups that I'm on. Uh, one of the really ones that kind of got me into doing this is um, Kathy from Royal Funky Junk. She has the sparkle chicks, the sparkle room um, that I'm a part of, and she has some really fun ideas that, that I can take. Um, and I just kind of do my own thing. If, if I have, um, if I have a, a, the, the exact same stuff or if I have something that's kind of like it, that's me. I'm, I'm one of those. Okay, so this is what it is. It's for, um, for kind of the same idea. And so this right here, um, I always make sure, do you see that right there? It's got a, a creative something, whatever. It's got a copyright. Make sure that you take that off. Um, oh, I modify it. Good, good, Joy. I do. I, I'm one of those where I take things and I'm like, you know what? It's, yeah, it's one of those. Okay, so all I do is just rip off a little bit of the corner. And this is a two-ply napkin. I want to make sure that I don't use both of them. I could, but um, today I'm not. So I want to take those apart. I had no idea until I was watching somebody uh, mod podge these that napkins were, I mean, I two ply, you know, toilet paper, but did not know napkins were two ply in that regard that you could rip them apart. I thought it was all dyed on, on one, you know, one, one side, but nope. Okay, so I am going to take I'm gonna mess around for a second here. I wanna make sure I'll do this. See how fun that is? Okay, so we are going to just do a little bit of creativity and I wanna make sure that, um, here it is, my scissors. I want to use 
I want to use this line. No, that's got some mismatch on it. I want to use this one here. So I am going to, um, let's see here. There we go. I'm just going to cut right here where it's at. And we're going to use that in a minute. But I just want it to be able, this is, this is going to actually, I'm going to put that on the top. But I want to take my star and I want to be able just to have a little bit of the outside around it, the, the lighter color. If I wanted to, I could take a, um, Uh, a dopper or um, a paintbrush and I could dip it in water and then go around it and it would look like a rustic tear look. You could do that um, but of course I don't have water down here at my my craft. I could use coffee but you know what I have to show you my cup. I'll have to read it to you. It says my coffee uh, coffee in my cup Jesus in my heart. Isn't that cute? I just got it from a friend for my birthday and I don't want to, um, I don't want to use my coffee cup or my coffee water that, or whatever. So a little sip there and we'll keep going. <laughs> All right. So I'm almost done here. I want to give about a quarter of an inch. That's usually when I'm cutting things out when I do, um, scrap making or cards and things like that about a quarter of an inch is really pleasing to the eye it makes it so that you don't have to go exactly around the object but um it just gives it a little bit more finished look and it is kind of rolling up just to fyi you kind of do have to finagle it a little bit and just just for me i have really shaky hands and so i have just kind of learned to just deal with it. It's one of those. So that's why oh, another reason why I leave that quarter inch around, um, out around my projects. Cause okay. Oh, look at that. How cool is that? I'm, I'm getting way more excited. Here we go. Okay. So now this one here, I'm going to just put a little bit of glue in the middle here and I am going to put it on there. Do I want it? Yeah. And then go ahead and just because we have that little brush, I'm just going to go on the outside and I want it to go down. You just want to be super careful that you do not um, put the Mod Podge on top of it and then pull it You because it is thin. I could have left the under layer on there, but I want it to just fade into my... Uh, my fabric and my can. So that's why I did not go and put it, um, do the two ply. So I have to be a little bit more precision on this. There we go. There. And then just go ahead and tap it with your finger. Make sure that it, it um, stays, stays down. Like I said, we're just gonna do right where we think the the napkin is going. There we go. And like I said, be really gentle. You don't want your, for this one, I do not want my napkin to rip. All right, so. Are you getting inspired? I want to be able to see if you decide that you want to do this project. I would love to see your pictures. And you can go to Jane Nicole Designs. I have a VIP page. Ask to be a member there and I will post on there what you make. And that's the other part of it's super fun to get more ideas. All right. Okay, so now what you want to do is 
pretty much just just leave it as it is. Um, I'm going to let this dry for a little bit and then after it is completely dry and I know that it's not going to, you know, go back and forth and whatnot, that um, then I'll put another coat of the, the Maj Paj on there and um, seal it up so that it, it stays just like that. Okay, so this one's going to be pretty simple. I My room is... Um, it, it's got gonna have a lot of stuff in it so I want this one to not be too crazy with a bunch of stuff but um, this is how I'm gonna leave this one so I may put a little bow on the top later on but see how if I were to put it on the wall there we go it's just gonna pull just to be out a little bit and that's why I say make sure that your handle is tall enough that you can do that but what I'm gonna do is I have one more last thing that I want to do with this one. I want to make sure that it looks beautiful. And so here I am. I'm frantically looking, but we are going to ah, there it is. This is um, this is floral foam. I get it at the dollar store, and um, all I did was this is what it looks like. Just popped a little piece off of it, and um, we are going to go ahead and put that in here. And I'm going to take my um, my glue gun because I don't want this to fall out. Especially just, you know, FYI, when you're doing projects and you, you want to give them away or sell them and whatnot, make sure that um, there is absolutely no, uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that it's going to stay together and not fall apart. And so I make sure that um, all of my stuff that I, I put together is... Uh, it's not gonna go go crazy and fall apart. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue down there, make sure that it stays. A little glue. There we go. So that's what you're gonna do. Just go ahead and put that in there. You don't have to, but it does just give you a better way to um, to embellish if you're going to fill it with flowers. And that's what I'm going to do. So. Um, today, because I am doing the kind of the Americano theme, um, I am going to add a little bit of sunflower in it in my room just because, you know, the red, the red and blue look great, but then um, I want it to be a little bit more country as well. So um, I'm going to decide if, you know, if that's one of the things that, that I might be adding the yellow. Um, but the cool thing about this is you can go ahead and I, these I used, uh, my daughter was married uh, a year and a half almost a year and a half ago. And it was uh, one of those where we we um, we made sure kind of thing where, uh, here we go. Um, I got, she was married in uh, November. And so I got like 70% off of all the flowers and whatnot. And um, so I have just kept them over, over the, the last year and a half and you know what? I want to put them in my room because it reminds me of her and she, um, she is special to me. Both my girls are very, very special A family. I, here's my thing. It says family is everything. I absolutely agree with that a hundred percent on both sides of our family. Our, let's do better. There we go. Our family is very important to us. There we go. That one's Oh, that one went somewhere. I'll have to find that one. But anyway, I'm just going to go ahead. This one needs to be a little bit back farther. There we go. I'm just going to do different, different levels of flowers. Usually when you do flowers like this, you work in lots of three. And in triangles, it's more pleasing to the eye to be able to do that. Let's make sure this one's, this one's a ginormous um, wire in it. There we go. So I'm gonna use the, the camera to, let's do it this way. No, nope, this way. There we go, we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna add some pretty stuff to it. Um, this I just got at the, the thrift store that I volunteer at um, in Post Falls it is a really fun. It's actually associated with our church. It's called Real Life Ministries. 
and they have so many fun different um, things that come into the shop. I love it. I volunteer there uh, three hours a week on Fridays just to, to be able to be creative. And um, the cool thing is, is if something comes in and, and one of my, the guys that works there, he's like, oh, Eileen, this is something that you would love. And he, uh, he sets it aside for me and, and I go through and I, if I like it, then I keep it. If not, then uh, we put it out on the floor and they have some really, really fun stuff. So that's where I got this. And that's the cool thing about thrifting. Some of this stuff is very expensive. Floral right now and ribbon and that kind of stuff is really, really expensive. So it's very, very nice to be able to um, to get it for, you know, um, at a thrift store. So I don't know about you guys. Um, if you guys have some good thrifting places and things like that, um, we are a little bit uh, sparse on thrift stuff, so um, I go out quite a bit thrifting, and sometimes I come come up very very lacking, <laughs> and then sometimes I hit the jackpot. So it just all depends on um, on the day. I went the uh, the other day, uh, yesterday I actually went and. I found nothing. It was like, oh, you know, all those things that you're like, oh, I hope I can find this, this, and nope, no good. Okay, I'm just gonna be doing a little bit of filling in of my flowers. And like I said, I'm gonna do lots of three. So one, two, and here's my third one. All right, so that's what it's looking like. I want a little one to kind of just bend down on the side here, just to put different layers together. There we go. That's what I love about these wire um, ones. You can bend them and move them wherever you'd like. There we go. And um, if you wanted to, I'm not going to do it for these ones. Um, you could take a um take your your heat gun and put a little glue at the end of the uh the stem so that you don't you know it doesn't fall out but um i'm not gonna these are just gonna go up on my wall and they're not gonna you know they're not gonna stay or they're not gonna fall around very much so i'll be okay on that and this one here i want to We'll do, we'll keep that part. I want to make this stem a little bit longer. So I'm gonna just cut this part off. That's the good part of modifying here. Well, let's just use this. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this right here and I'm gonna wrap it around. Because in my st regular stem, I, it was too short. And I want it, I want different levels of this. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on it. There we go. There we go. And we'll, let's see. I want it to go right here, it looks like. I will turn it around so you guys can see it. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so see how that's looking? I will do a little bit of futzing around and things like that, but um, we'll move. There we go. So, isn't that the funnest thing ever? I cannot wait to do more of these. But if you have any questions on how to do this, if there's a step that I missed, go back and watch the, the replay and you can, um, I'm gonna put these up on this video up on my uh, YouTube channel, Jane Nicole Designs, and um, you can rewatch and do all what you'd like. I mean, I think I, I, I can keep going, but you know, it's one of those, I try and keep it, uh, your time read an hour, but um, just to show you what you can do with 
a baked bean tin can. Um, so thank you so much for watching, everybody. Uh, you can be a part of my journey in crafting. Go to jnicoledesigns.com um, is my Etsy shop. Uh, my Facebook page is Jane Nicole Designs, and my YouTube channel is Jane Nicole Designs. But I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching and hanging out with me today. If you have any, you know, ideas and things like that that you could add to this uh, pr project, you have comments and things, please, please feel free to just any time that you're watching, go ahead and give me a thumbs up or hearts or you know suggestions and what to do. But um, thank you so much for watching and you guys all have an awesome day. We will see you again Wednesday at 10 a.m. Take care.